Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to do my kind of first ever sort of analysis, also just kind of like my thoughts on this new World of Warcraft cinematic, which is the Chains of Domination Kingsmorn cinematic. Um, this was so good and I just kind of wanted to first, before we even get into this, kind of talk about my BlizzCon experience because it was so amazing. So basically right now I'm visiting with my fiance who I met on World of Warcraft almost two years ago and we've always talked about wanting to go to BlizzCon and neither of us have ever been. And then of course with the pandemic, you know, it's not plausible for that to be a thing and it was cancelled and all that but I just wanted to say that it was such an amazing experience to be with my long distance partner watching a virtual BlizzCon because really our relationship is kind of virtual because we were in a long distance relationship and it was so amazing and we spent the day basically kind of playing some Heroes of the Storm and playing some World of Warcraft while watching it up on our TV and it's so funny because this cinematic came on while we were like in the middle of a Heroes of the Storm game and I wasn't like expecting I didn't really know like when or if we would get a cinematic during BlizzCon and then it was happening and I was all like mid team fight and like looking up and I'm like oh my god it's Anduin and oh my god like it was so it was so funny and I was also recording at the time because I did want to record just in case of anything did happen that was like worthy of getting my reaction um but it was just completely not good because the whole time I was like half watching it half playing heroes uh Derek was like kind of yelling at me like just go afk like just run to the side somewhere and like actually react to it and I was all like no like it's not right I'll just have to do it later it was kind of like a funny situation and then later on in the night so like last night I tried to kind of react to it and kind of capture my same like reaction because like I did get to see I kind of looked up while I was playing heroes and like saw Andu and like jumping through the smoke with, like with his sword and everything his new Morn blade in like his full jailer mod lich king armor and I was like oh my god like I was freaking out and it would have been such a good reaction if it hadn't been like ruined um, I haven't even looked at the footage yet I don't know if it's actually worthy of posting but I might take a look at it but I think it kind of worked out well because I kind of decided instead of doing a reaction which is what I usually do on my channel I'm gonna do my first kind of like I don't really want to call it an analysis but at least like giving my thoughts so instead of just watching it and reacting to it I'm kind of just gonna share like some of the thoughts that I've gathered about it um, and since then I have watched a few other content creators reactions and their analysis to it and everything and I've also kind of I've watched it myself a bunch and formed my own thoughts and one of my friends on Instagram uh, his username is Moscow Kid uh, and he's really big into lore just like I am and we were kind of talking paragraphs back and forth about kind of like different things that could happen and what we expect in the new raid and all that stuff so I basically ended up let me show you guys I have like a little book with my um stuff, all of my little notes that I kind of just want to make sure that I do touch on at some point in this video. Um, but one thing that I did want to talk about before we really get into the, like, the cinematic part of things is um, the new raid and how we found out that Sylvanas is going to be the final boss and that we will have a fateful encounter with her, I think is how they described it. And uh, as a lot of you know, if you ever check out my channel, I am like a strong Sylvanas loyalist, so I thought that a lot of people in the community might be interested to hear what I have to say on that and I'm sure there's a lot of people who are kind of like haha she's gonna be a boss like sucks to be you um so I just kind of wanted to give kind of my thoughts on that um so obviously I'm a mix of excited and terrified at the same time if Sylvanas dies I will be devastated but I did want to let you guys know that like my life isn't going to be over if that happens, as a lot of you may assume, because I am such a massive fan. But the thing for me is that I'm a psychopath, okay? I've created a space in my soul for Sylvanas to live in our reality, so regardless of what happens to her in-game, it doesn't affect my reality. Um, Sylvanas has been my queen that I've decided to basically devote my life to for over a decade, so... It doesn't really matter what happens, although it will be very upsetting for me if she does die, but I'm going to be just fine because she's still right here in my heart. And another thing I did want to touch on is kind of some of the scenarios that I think could potentially play out for Sylvanas, and this was kind of what I was talking to my friend on Instagram about. Um, so we think that there's like maybe roughly three 
different things that we think could happen. The first one is that in some way Tyrande will likely be involved, so I think that we're going to be fighting Sylvanas and we're going to get her health bar down to whatever percent and then we'll probably cut to a cinematic and it's likely going to be something either with Tyrande involved. I don't know. Personally, I think that when it comes to Tyrande confronting Sylvanas, I think at that point the Night Warrior may fully take over Tyrande and it'll almost be interesting to see it's kind of going to be like a timer. It's like, is Tyrande even going to be able to do what she wants to do before she's fully consumed by the Night Warrior? I don't really know. That could just be what I kind of hope will happen, but probably unlikely. But either way, I think that in some way Tyrande will be involved in this fateful confrontation that we will have. Um, the other option is that maybe Sylvanas might sacrifice herself to save Anduin in some way, which I think would be really interesting because then it would kind of satisfy both the people who don't like Sylvanas and the people who do, um, because if she sacrifices herself and dies, then that means the haters will be at least happy that she died and the Sylvanas loyalists will get to kind of feel like at least she was able to kind of do something with what she could make of it you know it'll kind of be like good closure in a way and i would be okay with something like that happening um but another thing that my friend brought up as well is that sylvanas does still have three valkyr and i don't know how that stuff works in the shadowlands like i'm pretty sure if you're dead you're dead but at the same time i don't know if maybe it's something where maybe three of her valkyr could sacrifice themselves to bring her back to life and then that would be the last of her Valkyr or I don't know if she maybe has more now that she is working with the Jailer but either way it is still something to consider that Sylvanas does technically have Valkyr still so if we do kill her it might not be the end so I thought that that was kind of an interesting thing to consider as well um and then kind of the third outcome is basically maybe someone saving Sylvanas so this could either be we haven't seen Nathanos in a while what if we are about to take out the Banshee Queen and Nathanos appears and somehow saves her in some way. Or this one's a little bit far-fetched. Probably wouldn't happen, but it would be pretty cool if it did, if Arthas saved her in some way. Um, I think that they were talking about at BlizzCon how the Jailer has a room where he likes to torment particular souls, which I think was heavily hinting towards Arthas, so it would be interesting if maybe when they say that we will see Sylvanas in the raid and there will be a fateful confrontation. It would be interesting if Arthas was tied into that too, because when you think about it, Arthas is heavily tied into Sylvanas' fate and it would just be insane to see that. Don't really know which of these scenarios will play out, if any of them, but I thought that they were interesting things to consider potentially happening. So yeah, anyways, that was pretty much all of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about before we kind of get into the cinematic and we'll just be kind of going through and here and there I will be pausing and kind of giving like my thoughts or just little things that I noticed or have in my notes here. Um, so I hope that you guys enjoy this. Um, I've never really done something like this. When I do my reactions I usually for the most part just kind of watch through and then give a few thoughts at the end but this is the first time I've ever really kind of like referenced notes and I've actually taken time to kind of compile my thoughts and whatnot so I'm very excited and I hope that it goes okay but keep in mind I'm kind of new to this so hopefully I do this okay and I hope that you guys enjoy. And also of course to start with the cinematic just kind of has a little recap up until we actually start it around here. Um, so I'm not going to be saying too much but I think I might touch on Sylvanas' facial expressions for a moment and then kind of go over them a bit more towards the end as well. So I did just kind of want to comment on how Blizzard has been taking so much time in these past three cinematics to really draw so much focus and attention to her facial expressions and the movements of her lips and her eyes narrowing. You can almost like, I feel like you can kind of see into like a bit of her soul and kind of experience what she might be feeling. Um, Sylvanas is extremely conflicted right now and I think that she's realizing and even we are realizing that she has more humanity and that little spark of hope of the ranger general still inside her like how anduin said that she hasn't fully eclipsed the ranger general and i have to say i am absolutely loving the relationship that sylvanas and anduin are having and the way that like i think they're kind of breaking through to each other um 
I think that Anduin can understand now a lot more about Sylvanas when he kind of clued into that realization of like, oh my god, like she's never had this choice. And they don't actually ever show whether Sylvanas does decide to force Anduin to join them or if he does make the choice willingly, but I'm pretty sure that she did end up having to go through with making the choice for him because you can clearly see that he was challenging her to go ahead and do it. If like if this is really what you want to do, like then show me that you have the power to do it. And I think that really hurts Sylvanas to have to make that choice. But as she said that she has not come this far to falter now, if she was not to go ahead and make this choice no matter how difficult it is, then what is every action that she's taken up to this point? So I think that that's one of the main things that when we see later on the doubt that she has in her, her eyes, she knows that these are not choices that she wants to be making, but she knows that every action that she's taken since she's essentially joined the Jailer back when she jumped off of ICC and got to meet the Jailer when she went into the Maw. So I think that she's kind of at a point where she has to continue making these difficult choices even though in the process of that she's realizing more and more that she's actually not okay and I think that she might even be thinking back to some of the things that she's done over the past year or two and kind of thinking is any of this worth it? It's all led me to this point and I don't know if I can keep going but she knows that she has to in order to, to in a way justify it. Um, I hope that that kind of makes sense the way that I'm explaining it but I will get more into it towards the end of the video but I just think it's so interesting that Anduin is the one that's breaking through to her. Despite all our efforts, the Maw continues to grow. What if Denathrius' treachery is irreparable? The Primus is lost, and Bastion cannot save the Shadowlands alone. None of this should have happened. Um, earlier when I was watching Akalon's video, he was saying how it's kind of funny how she's like, none of this should have happened, but at the same time, the Kyrian are literally still bringing souls even though they're going directly into the mall. Like, it's just kind of hilarious how messed up the purpose is uh, and the path that they just blindly are like, yeah, but this is our job. We're just going to keep bringing the souls, right? And it's like you're literally a massive contributor to what has happened. And the fact that you're even following the path, I'm sure soon you're going to realize that, that the Mossworn and Devos maybe are on to something that the path is flawed. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what's in store for Bastion over the next period of time to see if they kind of do come to that realization or not, but it's just kind of hilarious. Perhaps the Winter Queen could... My Archon, a living soul, seeks an audience. A mortal. A king. By all our measures, one who has spent his life striving for justice. So this is really cool for multiple reasons, but there's clearly being some parallels drawn to Arthas when he returned to the Lordaeron throne room to kill his father. And this is so interesting seeing Uther here and as he sees Anduin approaching, a few things happen. One, literally... Anduin resembles Arthas, so I think Uther, as he looks at him, not only one who would in a give moment, anything. In a moment, you'll see that he also clutches his wound on his chest. But I think that he's actually looking at Arthas and kind of being like, "This looks like Arthas when he was a young prince," and kind of everything that Uther had hoped that Arthas could have been, but it all fell apart, you know, like, it must be so intense for Uther to see Anduin literally resembling someone that looks like Arthas walking down this hall in front of him, and then just in a moment here we'll see him clutch his wound. To serve his people. And in that moment you can see that he feels the pain of not only his literal wound from Frostmourne being renewed, but he can feel probably just the power of the Maw. And I, I just, it's so insane to think that he couldn't have said anything. Like, I know that in terms of like, this has to happen lore-wise, but it's like, he definitely knew that something was not right, and it's, it's too bad he couldn't 
have done anything to stop it, but of course this has to progress. But God, it's just crazy. One whose heart is true. Very well. He may approach. And I think another thing I just want to say before this like massive scene comes forth, um, when I was watching this and I was kind of like I was saying earlier, I was stuck playing Heroes of the Storm in the middle of like a team fight basically while this trailer was happening and I was so excited because I already had seen the leaked artwork um, of Anduin in his new armor, like Lich King Maw Jailer armor and it was like, it was so insane and I just couldn't believe that this was like actually potentially happening right now like I wasn't expecting it to happen this soon but as I was kind of watching it and looking up at the tv I was like is it actually going to happen like is he going to turn into the lich king in the cinematic and when it did it was so insane but I think it's just it was just so much emotion because it's like I've really grown to like Anduin, uh, and I've, I've kind of liked him for a while, but not too deep, but I found that he always has reminded me a little bit of Peter from Narnia, and I've loved Narnia for such a long time, so I've always had this, like, little place somewhere in my heart for Anduin where, like, I have a soft spot for him, but because I mostly main Horde and because I follow Solanus, I've always kind of been, like, not fully welcoming to the idea of, like, Anduin that much, but it's so cool now to kind of get to see him in this way and how I've grown to him and now it's like I actually feel bad in a way it's like oh my god like I love Anduin like he's literally like a vessel of light and hope and here he is being controlled against his will and it's like it saddens me but I'm also very excited because for two reasons one it's like kind of getting to relive like the vibes of like Arthas becoming the Lich King and then, and then also just getting to see Anduin as this like badass because I've always gravitated towards like more like dark characters so it's just really interesting to see this character that like over the years I've grown more of a connection to and now he's like becoming so much more interesting I just really really love that. Step forward. My Ascended have spoken of you. The King held captive in the Mall. That prison could not hold me forever. Um, at this moment, uh, even when I was watching this for the first time before we actually knew whether or not uh, the Jailer was actually in control here, I could already see that line as literally being the Jailer telling the Archon, like, the prison that my brothers and sisters put me in could not hold me forever. Like, he's letting them know, like, I'm going to be breaking free and the prison you thought that was going to be inescapable, turns out I'm going to find a way to get out of there. So I thought that that was interesting because, I mean, literally, Anduin is saying, like, yeah, no, I'm, like, I'm out of the mall, like, you know, like, they couldn't hold me, but it's actually literally the jailer and I just thought that it was kind of cool that, like, I caught on to that at the start. I don't know. I'm sure other people did too, but it's just like, it's just cool that Blizzard did that, where it kind of works both ways. Why have you come to Bastion? You have a key that I need. And then it's at this moment she realized. You will release this soul from your grasp. No. He is bound to me. Just as you once sought to buy your own brother. This spot is so badass. So right there he said, just as you had sought to bound your own your own brother. And it's like that is like the most badass line ever and having the voice switch. It is just so cool. And then just seeing this maw magic come out and like bind them all in chains. It's just so cool. I have to say that this might be like one of my favorites, maybe my favorite cinematic that they've made, other than like their CGI ones. It's so good. And then right there at this moment, here I am playing Heroes of the Storm, looking up at my TV. I was like screaming. I'm so upset that I couldn't have gotten my first like proper reaction 
on my like when I was recording it and everything because just the circumstances didn't allow me to I might look at the footage and see if it's like still worth posting because I was freaking out it was so cool um but even like not only just the fact that like this is cool because I mean obviously he literally resembles Arthas with the white hair and just it's just so cool to see but the way that they did the cinematic like how the armor like switches oops my bad right here it's so cool how it just kind of like fades away and turns into his new like epic Ma armor, Lich King armor. It's so cool. And of course he has his new Morn blade, which we are all calling Shalomorn, but I guess it's King's Morn, I suppose. I don't know, unless that's just the name of this like trailer and it actually is called Shalomorn, but either way, it's freaking cool. It's right there, oops, in that moment that we can see it literally being sucked into the Morn Blade, which is very, I thought it was so cool to visually see this because we've always known that Morn Blades do literally like absorb souls, but to actually like see it so up close and so like, it's just so interesting. And this will be one of the keys that the Jailer needs, um, which we're going to touch on in a little bit. Um, but in a second here, we're going to see Anduin kind of snap into reality for just a moment and it is heartbreaking. You see for a moment panic and horror on his face at what he's doing and there is probably I think two different things that are happening I, and I think one is more likely. I think the jailer is literally torturing Anduin, kind of letting him know like, hey like this is what's happening and there's nothing you can do about it and he's about to regain that control over him in a moment, but I think he's just letting him know that, like, you can't fight my power that I hold over you. And also maybe they even break his soul a little bit. Like, he wanted Anduin to physically see what he's done and then take him back in just to break his soul. Um, but I think potentially maybe another thing is that just in such a profound moment where Anduin has gone against his will and killed someone even though we found out that apparently she's not dead says Steve Denuser so that's good um but I wonder if almost such a profound moment could have just actually allowed Anduin to re regain control for a moment because he is such a strong like light hope vessel person um but either way regardless of if he is breaking free or if it is the jailer allowing him to break free it only takes an instant for him to snap back under the jailer's control, and it's freaky. You can see the instant it happens, and his eyes shift right there, and he, he like shudders, and he's in full control. The vessel performed its part flawlessly. So this part, I'm so excited. This is one of my most excited, looking forward to parts, is talking about Sylvanas' emotions here. But he, the Jailer did just say that three keys remain. So I think it's so crazy to know that, like, literally, the Eternal Ones are literally the keys to him essentially escaping his prison. I would think that that's what they're trying to say here. And not only that, but it also goes back to one of the whispers from Ilganoth of five keys to open our way, five torches to light our path. Um, it's hard to say whether or not this is for sure referencing this because it could also be about the Pillars of Creation back in Legion, but either way, it's still pretty interesting that that could be fulfilled because we have Denathrius who has fulfilled his role, and then now we have the Archon, the Winter Queen, the Primus, and the Arbiter. So that would be five keys once he's obtained all of those. So even if the Whisper isn't necessarily about this, it's very interesting that it would still fit. Um, but what I really want to talk about is Sylvanas's emotions here, which I was touching on earlier in the video. You can tell that she is not okay with this. 
especially, I like, I think at this point she's realizing, like, she's kind of regaining her humanity, and I think it's through Anduin kind of challenging her that she's realized this more, but I think especially because it is Anduin and the level of respect that she has for him, and he's her little lion, and you can tell that she is not okay with this, but like I was saying earlier, I think it's one of those things where she knows she kind of just has to bite her tongue and go along with it because she is so close to whatever her end game is. Um, at this point, there's really nothing she could do to try to do anything here. Like, I mean, what is she supposed to do? Try to, like, attack the jailer? Like, I mean, she can't really do that. So she knows that she has to just go along with it. And as much as it's hurting her, she has no choice. Um, which I think is interesting because a lot of these cinematics have been based around like making your choice and yet again she's realizing she doesn't really have a choice in this matter so she's experiencing guilt and doubt and uncertainty and sadness and anger and so many things all at once and I just I love that they've been focusing so much on her facial expressions um, and in a moment here you can see she's in deep thought um, considering all that's happening, but a big thing that, that I think is happening here is that Sylvanas is realizing through the Jailer literally demonstrating this in front of her. She's realizing that the Jailer was behind everything that's ever happened to her. That actually Arthas wasn't in control and it was likely the Jailer that has ruined everything for her. All of this stuff that she's been driven on with vengeance and fate it all comes back to the Jailer, and I think that she's putting that together right now, that this is all the Jailer's fault, and here she is, and she's been an ally to him ever since after we defeated Ice or after we defeated Arthas and she jumped off of Ice Crown, and here she is, she's been working with the Jailer, not even realizing that it's been him the whole time, and he's truly who she seeks vengeance on, and she's so frustrated in here and you can see in a moment she's gonna look very ticked off see. god it's so hard to pause it right at the spot see. she's looking up at him in complete disgust because i think she's put it together now but there's really nothing you can do but i think that low-key she might be thinking like have you ever played 5d chess and i think that she might be starting to plan what she might actually do to take some action and intervene in whatever plans the Jailer actually does have, so I almost wonder if that might be something to do with what we might see um, in the raid when we have a fateful confrontation with her. Um, what if it's actually something to do with her intervening with the Jailer and kind of changing the whole course of the Shadowlands? I mean, that would be pretty cool. It would also be interesting, like, as a Sylvanas loyalist, if I could, like, write it how I wanted to, I would probably have it where she was able to finally get her true vengeance on the Jailer, because all of her life she was Arthas, 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 I need to kill Arthas, I need to seek my vengeance. And then when he died, and she realized she really had nothing left, and she killed herself on Ice Crown, she probably felt so much emptiness, because I mean, she got to play a part in taking out the Lich King, but she wasn't actually the one, like, confronting him directly and getting gaining her vengeance directly so I think that it would be so cool to see that play out and that she actually did get her true vengeance because it wouldn't have even been real if it was towards Arthas because he wasn't even in control so could you imagine how epic it would be if like Anduin, Arthas, and Sylvanas came together and took down the jailer that would be so cool not gonna happen but it would be badass so yeah that's kind of my thoughts right now Death was never meant to be and then that's it that's shadowlands uh chains of domination so badass i love it and then of course right there we have our new zone that we're going to which i think was called corthia i didn't really write that part down or look too into the new zone if i got it wrong i'll put it on the screen but i'm so excited to go here and learn the secrets of the first ones because i'm pretty sure that that's what they were talking about at blizzcon that's what this zone is all about um i'm so stoked and i guess that he just kind of sent his chains up from the maw i don't know if this was specifically the landmass that he was looking for if it, or if it's just what he caught but 
either way, I'm so stoked to go here. The cinematic was so good and just, it must be so interesting. Like when Sylvanas is over here looking at Anduin, like not only is she having like her thoughts and just emotions that she's experiencing, but also she's probably looking at him like, this looks like Arthas. Like this is basically like the Lich King standing in front of me, but she played a part in it. Like it's basically, she's probably seeing a bit of herself and a bit of Arthas at the same time. But yeah, I don't really know <laughs> what else to say. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this type of video. I've never done something like it. I hope I did it okay. I know I'm kind of bad at like formulating my thoughts. That's why I, I kind of suck at reaction videos in general or videos in general. I'm basically just an awkward nerd and I'm not good at talking. So I did my best. I hope that you guys enjoyed and I know that I definitely need to get some more practice in. I'd love to do more videos like this in the future, but for now, I hope that you guys uh, enjoyed, and I'd love to give credit to Akalon and Pyromancer and Valuar and Noble and my friend Mosco for kind of uh, helping me kind of compile all of my thoughts and work my thoughts into their thoughts and just kind of bring this video to you guys. So I hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you guys again next time. Bye!